Hi, everyone. Welcome to KQ. Mitch Hightower here, coming to you today from our house in San Francisco, California, where it is a cool 57 degrees. It is sunny and mostly clear outside, but there is definitely November chill in the air here in Fog City. So, welcome to the show. It's great to see you. Sent one 1000. Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's great to see you. We, we really appreciate your support. And of course, uh, from all the viewers, it's so fun to do these lives and be able to get the feedback in the chat room in real time. And of course, you know, we love having a little party every Tuesday at noon. So what are we up to today? Today, we are going to make, let me show you. Ta-da! These are sausage and cheese egg cups. And... I'm going to show you exactly how to make these. It's super easy and fun, and these taste really yummy. So let me check in with the chat really quick and say hi. Hey, Mike's here from Dude's Kitchen and Grill. It's always a pleasure to have you here. I hope everything's going well where you are. And Just Winging It is here. So awesome to see you today. Thanks for coming to join us. We appreciate you hanging out this afternoon. So uh, we're going to make these sausage and cheese egg cups. So what are egg cups? Well... As you can see, they're muffin shaped because they're made in a muffin pan. So uh, what I like about these is there are no um, high carb elements with the exception of a couple of the vegetables I'm choosing to add. And because there's no flour or other wheat products, they're naturally gluten free. So if you have people in your life that have issues with uh, gluten or you have people that are on lower carb food plans. This can work for you. I'm going to do a version today that's not strictly low carb, but I will give you options for some of the low carb choices when it comes to adding the veggies. Hey, Sundays with Heart is here. It's great to see you guys. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. If you missed the very beginning of the show, we're going to make sausage and cheese A cups today. Okay. Another savory baking recipe. So one of the first things I want to make sure and do is get our oven preheating. So right here we have a June intelligent oven. If you've watched our live streams or our other pre-recorded videos in the past, you've probably seen us use the June oven before. And so what I want to do now is get it ready to bake. So I'm going to push the bake button and I want to set the oven temperature for 375. And then we just push start. So the June now is preheating. So I see Margaret's here from Margaret's Make and Bake. Hey, it's great to see you, Margaret. I hope everything's well over there in Europe where you are. And let's see, I think I said hi to everyone who's here so far. Oh, Cooking with Steven and Jacqueline is here. Woohoo, it's great to see you. They just had a great new video on their channel. So if you haven't checked out Cooking with Steven and Jacqueline yet, you definitely need to give them a try. And uh, Margaret's Make and Bake just recently had a new video too, which was also super delicious. She makes lots of lovely sweets and desserts and we just love that channel. And Dude's Kitchen and Grill, Mike's always making some cool stuff in his outdoor kitchen. Sometimes he's with his family members in the indoor kitchen. We really dig that channel too. So thank you all for coming to join us. We really appreciate it. So like I said before, today's project is sausage and cheese egg cups. Ta -da. I already made some a couple days ago and uh, this is the last four of the dozen that I made last time. Some of you may have seen posts about this on our Instagram recently. Um, we make these often actually and they're super easy to do and I'm going to show you every detail of exactly how to make it happen. So let me put these back here and then let's give a rundown to the ingredients list. Uh, let's see. Uh, first thing I want to do is tell you about the different ingredients. Um, and also we're going to be using, I think I mentioned this before, a, a muffin pan. It's just a regular 12 cup muffin pan. And I've already sprayed it with olive oil cooking spray. And I did that offset over in the kitchen, <laughs> primarily because this spray, as you know, if you've used uh, most types of cooking spray, little particles tend to float all over the place. And nonstick cooking spray and electronic electronic equipment do not go together. I definitely don't want this on our microphone or on our camera lens or getting all over the laptop. So that's why I took care of greasing the muffin pan off camera aside uh, in the kitchen before we started today. 
Okay, and other things that I do, a lot of uh, other channel operators often ask me how you set up for a live stream, and my answer is pretty much the same way any other video, or often it's similar to when I'm expecting to have company or guests. So I like to have all of the different ingredients ready before I start. So I'm gonna give you the ingredient list and then I'm gonna tell you what I've done in advance to get everything ready today. So uh, the first ingredient is going to be sausage, obviously, since these are sausage and cheese egg cups. Now, when I say sausage, what I'm talking about are patties like this. And this comes from one of those log-shaped breakfast sausages. And we usually have these for breakfast on Sunday. Philip cuts the log up into slices like this. They're about, oh, I'd say three-eighths of an inch thick and a couple of inches in diameter. So you'll get about 10 or 12 of these out of a regular log of sausage. The brand we usually use is Jimmy Dean's and we seem to have an affinity for the hot version of that sausage. You can use whatever kind of sausage you want. Um, so this is already cooked, these, these were leftovers. So oftentimes we have several pieces of sausage left over and sometimes they get used and sometimes they don't. So I wanna make sure that I don't waste food because as you know, food is really expensive. So we're using these leftover sausage patties. And today what I did was I just cut them up in little bits. There's four sausage patties in here and I just cut them in little, I'd call this a dice, a medium dice, maybe a, yeah, about a medium dice. So I cut all four of the sausage patties up into a medium dice. And that was one of the things I did in advance. And the next ingredient that we're going to need, yes, the hotter the better. I tend to like spice myself. Okay, so the next ingredient we have is obviously some cheese. Okay, this cheese has already been grated. Today I'm using a combination of Colby and Jack that came as a marbled block of cheese, and then I grated it myself. Now, you can use packaged cheese that's pre-grated if that's more convenient for you, and if you're not worried about the gluten aspect. Um, for recipes that you want to remain gluten-free. You don't want to use pre-grated packaged cheese because the way that manufacturers, uh, the method manufacturers employ to keep the shreds from sticking together involves coating the shredded cheese with flour or other wheat products. Definitely not friendly to a gluten-free food plan. So that's why I like grating the cheese myself. We don't have gluten issues uh, here at our house. None of our family members do, but I like to keep cut carbs out whenever I can these days. So I see Sunset has joined us. Hey, Sunset, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. And Double ZZ Ranch is here, woot woot. Great to see you. How's everything going up there in Oregon? Okay, so we were grated cheese. You can use any kind of easily melted cheese that you like. Cheddar, Asiago, Gouda, you know, uh, if you want to spice up the mix a little bit, you could use pepper jack cheese. I've done that before and that's super delicious. So cheese is our second ingredient. And then using one quarter of a onion and I just diced it very small. Okay, we're trying to keep the pieces of things for these cut as small as possible. And that just, I think, makes them easier to put together and also easier to eat. So, onion. Um, let's see. And also, now here's a couple of ingredients. I also have a half a cup of frozen corn and a half a cup of frozen peas in here. Now, corn and peas are not low carb vegetables. They're at the higher end of the carbohydrate scale when it comes to veggies. So if low carb is really important to you, then these would not be the vegetables for you. You can substitute almost anything you like. You could use celery. You could use mushrooms. They're very low carb. If you want to use a leafy green, I would suggest spinach. But I would recommend using fresh spinach rather than frozen because frozen spinach is going to add a lot of water content and that will interrupt how well the eggs set while they're baking. So if you want to use fresh spinach, I would roll it up and chiffonade it with a sharp chef knife rather than put whole leaves into the egg cup. So let's see if, and let me check in with the chat room. Oh, I see Karen's here. Hey, Karen, great to see you. Karen's here from In the Kitchen with Karen. Welcome. And Deb's here. Oh, Miss Deb. Mwah. Oh, from Deborah's Delicious Dishes. It's so great to see you, Miss Deb. I hope you're having a good day where you are. 
So we were just talking about corn and peas. I'm going to use these today just because they were on hand in the freezer and so it's readily available. But if these are too high carb for your food plan, like I said, you could substitute mushrooms, you could substitute celery, you could substitute spinach. You could also use tomato. But again, you want to be very careful when you're using vegetables that have a high water content. So what I would recommend if you're going to use tomato is hollow out the center of the tomato with a scoop and just use the outer portion of the flesh of tomato and dice it in really small pieces. That should work just fine without introducing too much water content into this mix. So corn and peas, that's what I'm gonna use today. And let's see, Keith is here. Hey Keith, great to see you. I hope you and Terry are doing well at your house. We really enjoyed your video. Uh, where you were out on the Weber Grill. We just watched that yesterday. That was so great. If you're not familiar with Keith Betag's channel, please be sure and check it out. He makes wonderful things. His wife, Terry, films his videos, and they are a hilarious couple. They have a lot of fun in their kitchen and outdoors at their grill. So we really appreciate seeing you here today. Thank you for joining us, Keith. It's awesome to have you here. Okay. So let me see, we were talking about peas and corn. Okay, so those are uh, the sausage, the cheese, onions, peas and corn. I've also got a little bit, I took one quarter of the bell pepper. I had a green one, so I just diced that really small. You can use a red one, an orange one, a yellow one, whatever color bell pepper you like. Bell pepper is lower in carbs, so this is okay if you're doing a low carb or keto food plan. Um, and if you want to spice things up a little bit, you can substitute one jalapeno pepper for the one quarter bell pepper, and that would give you a nice little kick in your egg cups. I do that often. Uh, today, I'm not doing that because I'm saving the jalapenos we have in the refrigerator for a video we're taping tomorrow, and I'll tell you about that more later. Okay, so we've got some bell pepper here to add to our veggie medley. And yes, like sent one just, yes, jalapeno, absolutely. You can totally use jalapeno, like I said. That's one of my favorite additions. If you want to spice things up a little bit, it's a really easy way to do that. Just make sure you remove the seeds and the membranes and just use the outer flesh of the jalapeno pepper. That works best for this recipe. So uh, let's see. Now, as far as our liquid ingredients, what we're going to need are four eggs. And I've already cracked the eggs into this bowl. And I put a uh, saran wrap over the top just mostly to keep myself from spilling it while it's sitting here on the table until we're ready to use it. So that was four eggs that I cracked in a bowl in advance. And we also have one quarter cup heavy cream. Okay, notice I said heavy cream. No cream cheese, Keith. <laughs> no cream cheese in our recipes today. So uh, we've got one quarter cup of heavy cream. If you're not a fan of all the fat and heavy cream and you want to use a lighter dairy product, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I like the richness of heavy cream in it. Such a small amount, I don't really think it's contributing so much fat that I need to be that concerned about it. I kind of operate out of the belief system that fat is your friend. It's sugar that's going to kill you. So anyway, let's see. Okay, I think I've said hi to everyone in the chat room. It's great to see everyone here today. We really appreciate you coming to hang out with us this afternoon. So in addition to the eggs and the cream, then I've also got a half a teaspoon each of salt and ground black pepper. So these will be our seasonings for the egg cups today. Okay, so those are that's our list of ingredients. Now, like I said, you can substitute other vegetables to suit your taste. If any of these choices don't please you, pick something else. You don't have to use sausage. You can use bacon. You could use little bits of ham. You know, you could use some lovely filet mignon if you have some left over from your barbecue last night. You know, whatever kind of meat product that you want to add to this, or you could leave the meat out entirely if that doesn't please you. But today we're using breakfast sausage. So, uh, yes, filet mignon, I know. <laughs> I need to find some grilling people here in San Francisco to grill me some filet mignon because as much as we love grilling, and we love watching all these barbecue and grilling channels. We don't usually barbecue here at our house, though we do have a kettle grill in the garage. There's no convenient outdoor space that's near our kitchen. We live on a hillside that's very steep, so to walk down into what actually is the backyard portion of our house, we have to go down seven different flights of stairs, and it's we just found it's not realistic to try to cook 
way downstairs and then bring everything up here where, you know, you could call it lazy if you want to. If we had a balcony right outside of the dining room, we'd be grilling out there every afternoon, I'm sure. So meanwhile, today we're going to do savory baking and we already have the June oven heating up. This is our countertop oven, which we are official testers for. And yes, I am recommending this product. If you want to check it out, you can go to june.com and see what they've got going on there. You can also find this product listed on Amazon. So if you shop at Amazon, check it out there. Uh, actually, yes, Sundays with Heart, we do have a grill pan. We have a cast iron enameled grill pan. The outside is shocking bright red, and it actually works really well. It's a little on the small side. I tend to use it mostly for vegetables, and I've made hamburgers on it a couple of times. Uh, but we're not, um, we're, we really want a barbecue outside. I want, I want the whole nine yards. I definitely want a Blackstone flat top griddle. There are so many things you can do on a flat top. It's like having a restaurant in your own house. I really love those. So uh, let's see. Now, I gave you all the list of ingredients, and I also published the list of ingredients below this video in the description section, so you can copy and paste that to go along with the directions I'm gonna give you how to do this today. And this is actually supremely, supremely easy. So uh, what I wanna do first, let's make the sausage and cheese mixture, super easy. We're just going to put in the sausage that I already prepared earlier. And that was just sausage patties, in case you weren't here earlier, I took sausage patties that were already cooked and I just diced them up into a medium dice. There are four sausage patties in here. So the next thing we want to do is add the cheese. This is one cup of cheese. And like I said, today I'm using a uh, marbled Colby Jack cheese that I grated, but you can use almost any kind of cheese that pleases you. If you want to add a little kick to the recipe, Pepper Jack will definitely do that. So let's see. Oh, Mr. Homeowner's here. Hey, Mr. Homeowner, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to see your avatar come across our screen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, so we have the sausage and the cheese in here. Next, I'm gonna add the onion. There we go. Okay, and the diced bell pepper, and that goes. Now, I don't wanna waste any of these vegetables, so I'm just gonna take a spatula and coax the rest of these little pieces of bell pepper out of this plastic storage container. And then finally, I'm going to add the frozen corn and peas. Now, like I mentioned earlier, if you weren't here right at the start, Corn and peas are high in carbs, so if you're looking, uh, if you work a lower carb food plan, then you might want to substitute something like mushrooms, spinach uh, for the corn and peas. And then I'm just going to take the spatula and I'm just going to mix all of these ingredients together. It's supremely easy. We want to try to get everything as evenly distributed as possible. And so there, we have a really nice mix. I mean, it's not going to get much easier than that. Just a little stir, stir. So we make sure we've got all the cheese and the sausage and the veggies all thoroughly blended together. Voila. Supremely easy. Okay, so that part's finished. Now we're ready to move on. And it's time to do the eggs. So I already have four large eggs cracked in this glass bowl. And I did that off camera earlier as well. I always try to do as many um, things in advance as I can to expedite putting things together. So let's face it, watching, unless you're doing a video where you're specifically teaching people how to crack an egg, watching people crack a bunch of eggs isn't really that interesting. So I did that part earlier before we started today. So we've got four eggs in here. And to that, I'm going to add one quarter cup of the heavy cream that we mentioned earlier. Okay, and then we're going to just add the salt and pepper. Supremely easy to do. Now, what I want to do next is I want to whisk all of these ingredients together. So I'm wondering when you guys at home are whisking, do you prefer to stir your whisk around in circles like this, or do you prefer to go back and forth in zigzag lines? I mean, everyone has a different way they like to whisk. I just really want to whisk this so it's as well beaten as possible. And we're just going to keep whisking. I want to get it just a little bit frothy so there's some bubbles around the edges of the bowl. So that's just going to take a minute or two.
Yes, cast iron is a pain to clean, but it cooks things like no other pan will. So it's worth it. Uh, if we had a scullery made, I would have him do it. <laughs> the cleaning, that is. So I'm just going to keep whisking this until I get it just a little bit frothy. Yes, we change our minds, too, depending on our mood at the time. <laughs> we do operate out of moods around here sometimes. But I'm, I have my, uh, my mood meter set to being in a fabulous mood every Tuesday between noon and one o'clock because I just love doing these live streams. It's so fun to be able to hang out and get feedback in real time. So if you're a channel operator and you're thinking of doing live streams, I would definitely encourage you to give it a try. Like I said, it's very fun. And you'll also notice, I suspect like we have, that your watch hours will increase significantly during a live stream, especially if people hang out for a whole hour with you. You know, you only need 20 people to hang out for an hour and there you've got 20 hours worth of watch time for only one show. So for us, that's not a bad number. Um, we actually had a really fun live show on Halloween night over across in the bar that's behind where the camera is pointing at me now. And that was a super fun show. We got 50 hours of watch time after that. We had lots and lots of guests that night. And it actually went on for almost two hours. So if you're interested in trying a live screen, live stream on your channel, I would encourage you to give it a go because it is very fun. Okay, we're just about to the point where the eggs are starting to look a little bubbly. You want to make sure these are really well mixed because we're going to be adding this a couple of tablespoons at a time to the muffin cups once we put the other ingredients in. So we don't want big blobs of the white or unbeaten yolks winding up in that mix. So I want to make sure we get these as thoroughly whisked as we can. Okay, let me see. Uh, okay, I think I said hi to everyone in the chat. If I missed you, just know that we appreciate you being here. And I'll do my best to say hi to everyone as the show unfolds. And if you have any questions as we're going along, type them in and put the at symbol and then type kitchen queers. And it, as you know, it makes a little orange rectangle and it's easier for me to see as the chat scrolls by. Yes, Mr. Homeowner, I'm, if you missed the sausage part, I used breakfast sausage that was cut into patties just like this. And this has already been cooked. This is actually leftover pieces of sausage from our Sunday breakfast. And so I just chopped these into a small dice. So I used a total of four pieces of, pieces of sausage in this mixture. And you can use sausage, you can use uh, ham bits, you can use bacon if you want. I'd probably put at least four and maybe six pieces of bacon chopped up really small if I was gonna substitute bacon for the sausage. So you can use any type of breakfast meat that you want. And you don't have to limit these sausage cups to just a breakfast treat. I usually eat them for lunch. And one of the things I really like about the sausage and cheese egg cups is that it's a grab and go thing. I love to cook, but sometimes I don't wanna have to cook every single day. And with this dish, you don't have to because you'll have a dozen of these little beauties and I stash them in an airtight container in the refrigerator, and then I can just pop them out one or two or three at a time, and they reheat really nicely in the microwave oven. I usually use 50% power just for, you know, maybe 35 or 40 seconds per uh, egg cup. That should do it. And you could also reheat these in the oven if you are not a fan of microwaves. But I really like the convenience of a microwave. You can also just put these in plastic bags and send them off with the kids. You can take them to work with you and heat them up. Just make sure you don't uh, let anyone else get a hold of them because then they'll eat them all and you won't have any lunch. So that's what we're going to do today. We're making sausage and cheese egg cups. Now, Keith has a question. Uh, he's got a brisket on the smoker. Ooh, -hoo, a brisket on the smoker. That sounds awesome. Okay, it's great to see you, Keith. We hope that brisket comes out well. Love and hugs and kisses to you and Terry. We adore both of you, and we're so glad to see you here today. So we hope everything goes well with the grilling. And mac and cheese with brisket for dinner, that sounds awesome. 
Yes, I know, Margaret. I love grab and go too. Because like I said, I love to cook, but I don't want to have to cook every single day if I don't, if I'm not in the mood for it. So I love grab and go things. So that way, uh, you know, it's, there's things already ready in the fridge and all I have to do is warm them up. And, you know, there's an easy lunch or an easy afternoon snack. And like I say, these things there, they keep well in the refrigerator for several days and they don't have to be always served really hot. I mean, you can serve them at room temperature and they actually taste really good. So, okay, let me see. I think I said hi to everyone. Okay, so we've got the egg mixture that we've beaten up. That looks good. Let me make sure. Yeah, you want to make sure that it's really runny like this so you don't have any solid pieces of yolk or thick pieces of egg white remaining. So that looks about how we want that to be. Okay, so we've got our sausage, cheese, and veggie mixture here. Stash this aside. So the next thing that we need to do is put the sausage and cheese mixture into the muffin pan. Now, I mentioned earlier that this has already been pre-greased. If you missed that part of the show, I used olive oil cooking spray today. You can use whatever kind of cooking spray suits you or whatever you happen to have in the cabinet. When I'm doing savory baking, I usually use olive oil cooking spray because I think it uh, really helps um, with the savory aspect of the baked goods. So that's why I'm a big fan of olive oil cooking spray. So I coated this off screen earlier and if you missed it, the reason that I like to do that is cooking spray and electronic equipment don't go together. I definitely don't want residue from this getting on our microphone or our laptop or the webcam that we have or all over my table. So this is something I like to take care of over in the kitchen sink. And then that way we don't have overspray all over the place. So uh, let's see. Do these freeze well? Well, that's a good question, Sunset. And I actually cannot answer you accurately because I personally have never put these in the freezer. Though a recipe I read that's similar to this suggested that you most definitely can put them in the freezer and then thaw them out and reheat them later. So I'm sure that's something that would work, but I can't tell you exactly how to do it because we've never frozen them. These at our house don't really last more than a couple or three days. It seems like all of our housemates like these. And if I put a stash of them in the refrigerator, there's a pretty good chance that by the next day, half of them are gonna be gone already. So freezing something isn't uh, something that we always do, but you could definitely give that a try. Okay. Oh, and I see Dario's here. Hey, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. We hope everything's going good at the restaurant. What are you guys serving for dinner tonight? Let us know. We'd love to hear all about it. Okay. So we're getting ready. We've got the sausage and cheese mixture with our veggies all ready to go. And our egg mixture is all ready to go. So now we're ready to put the sausage, cheese, and veggie mixture into the prepared greased muffin pan. So what I'm going to do is I'm using a one third cup measuring cup and I'm just going to dip this in and get a third of a cup of the mixture and pop it right in to the muffin cup. And I'm just going to keep repeating that for all 12 muffin cups. I like to measure when I'm doing this because I think it makes a, uh, I, I want all the cups to come out as identical as possible. And so measuring things is one of the things that helps make that happen. You can certainly eyeball this and you could fill these up just using a spoon if that's what you want to do. I like to use a measuring cup just because like I said, I want each one of these to be as identical as I can get them. So I'm just going to take the third of a cup measuring cup and continue working until all of these are filled. Yes, I think Margaret has a good idea. Freeze them individually or maybe two per bag and then that way you can just pop out what you want uh, rather than having a whole bag full of them. I think that sounds like a great idea. Thank you so much, Margaret, for that excellent suggestion. Okay, so going to keep on going now if sometimes when I've made this in the past there's enough mix to only fill up 10 or 11 of the 12 muffin cups it's uh, you know that's okay if you don't get exactly 12 out of it it's about how much volume 
your ingredients are. And, you know, I said one quarter of an onion and sometimes onions are a little bigger than other times. So that can change the actual volume of the material that you've got to work with. And that's perfectly okay. So I'm going to see if I don't know if we're going to get 12 out of this. We might get 11. Okay, so I'm going to need a spoon to help me out here because we're getting down to the bottom. Okay. So we're going to be able to fill up 11 of these 12 cups with the volume of material that I have here today. And that's okay. If it doesn't come out to exactly 12, no one will know but us. And the 300 other people <laughs> watching the video. So there's a little bit left in here. I'm going to stash it in this last cup that isn't quite as full as the other ones. Okay. So now if you want to have exactly 12 of these, you could take a little bit of material out of a couple of other cups and transfer it into this last one. I'm not going to do that because I think this looks like it's fine the way it is. Okay, so now we've got our sausage, cheese, and veggie mixture in the muffin cups. This one looks a little tiny bit too full, and that one looks a little bit empty. So, you know, you can mess around with these and tweak it if you need to. There, I think that looks pretty even. I don't know. What do you guys think? Does that look pretty even? I think it looks pretty even. I think we can go with that. Okay. So we've got the sausage, cheese mixture distributed into our muffin pan. And now the next thing that we want to do is... Add our egg mixture. So I'm just going to give this a quick little whisk while I check in with the chat. Sent one's talking about brisket frittata. This is, yeah, you could actually take these ingredients here and and the egg, and you could just put it in a greased pie pan or a nine by, uh, maybe a nine by 13 might be a little too large for this material, but you could turn this into a frittata-like thing. It's not gonna quite be an omelet, but you could definitely prepare this and put it into a larger pan and then cut it into slices rather than making individual egg cups. That'll work just fine. I'm not sure how much you would have to adjust the baking time, these, you, these bake for between 20 and 25 minutes. If it was in a pie pan, it's probably going to take longer for the center to set. So you'd have to probably adjust the time. Okay, now, how are we going to get this egg mixture into here? Well, I'm not going to pour it. I want to measure it, just like I measured the sausage cheese vegetable mixture. And I'm using a tablespoon. And I'm just going to scoop out one tablespoon of the beaten eggs and add one tablespoon to each muffin cup. And then I'm gonna go back and add a second tablespoon. I usually do one tablespoon at a time first, just to be sure that I'm not overfilling any of the cups. So one tablespoon per cup to start. And I'm just pouring it right over. It'll distribute itself around so it's not super rigid what you have to do to make this happen. Okay, now that was one tablespoon in each muffin cup. Now I'm gonna go back and put another tablespoon in each muffin cup. So there we have that. So we're on our second tablespoon of beaten egg. And if you missed the beginning, that's beaten. there are four eggs in here that I beat together with a half a teaspoon salt, a half a teaspoon pepper, and a quarter cup of heavy cream. And you wanna make sure and whisk these really, really thoroughly. So as you can see, it's re a really nice, smooth, easily to measure and pour mixture. We're almost to the end. Okay, so now we've got two tablespoons in each one and I still have a little bit of egg left. So I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna eyeball just a tiny little bit of extra egg into each one of these cups until I use 
all the egg mixture up. Like I said before, I'm sure you already know this, food is expensive. So I like to make sure everything I have gets utilized. Okay, we're almost to the end of the egg mixture, so I'm just using a little extra bit. I'd say it's, it's about mm, maybe a light teaspoon. So we've got two tablespoons plus a teaspoon of the egg mixture in each one of the muffin cups. So that's all it takes. So now with this done, there we go. Oh, I see Shane is here from Never Trust a Skinny Chef Chain. Hey Shane, it's so great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We hope everything's going well at your place. It's so nice to see you today. Anyway, okay, so where were we? All right, I've prepared the muffin pan filled with the sausage, cheese, and veggie mixture. And then as you saw, we just poured two little, two plus tablespoons of the egg mixture on top. And this baby's ready to go in the June oven. So let's make sure we're up to temperature. We're up to 375. So we're ready to pop this baby in. So let's get over here. Slide this baby right in the oven. Ooh. All right, now we're gonna pop that in and then I'm going to set the timer on the oven. And I'm gonna set it for 20 minutes. I've found sometimes these are done at 20 minutes and sometimes they need 25 minutes. So we'll check at the 20 minute mark and see how things are looking. I wanna be sure that they're all completely set and that there's a nice light browning going on on the top of all the muffin cups. That's how we'll be sure that they're done. So while that's happening for 20 minutes, let me look and see in the chat and see who's here. I see everyone's here. Hey, it's so, oh my gosh, we have such a nice party going on in the chat room today. Thank you for joining us, everyone. We really appreciate it. So the muffin cups are in the oven and as you saw, supremely easy to put together. One of my favorite things about doing savory baking is, or a lot of baking things is that, you know, you do all this work and you put everything together and you put it in a pan and then you stick it in the oven. And then the next thing, you know, everything's already already, you know, there's no standing over the stove. Uh, you know, it's usually you don't have to get too hot and sweaty. So that's why I just love, love baking stuff, especially savory things here at our house. I do most of the savory baking and my partner, Philip does most of the sweet baking. Those of you who are familiar with our channel probably already are well aware that Philip loves to bake cakes and cookies and blondies and brownies and all kinds of good stuff. So if you want to see more of that, check out our Instagram feed. And if you make any of our recipes, be sure and post it and tag us on Instagram so we can see how you did. We love to see how people uh, have used our recipes and some, if you tweak it and do something new and different, I would love to see every detail about how you made that happen. <laughs> Shane says muffin cups, but he's thinking muffin tops. Um, yeah, I th some of us have one of those. <laughs> I th I'm blaming it on middle age myself. It has nothing to do with what I eat. So, okay. Now, while we're here, one of the things I like to do while we're waiting for things to bake in the oven is mix a cocktail. <laughs> so, one of our viewers asked if I could make something that's different than anything that we usually make. As you've watched our, uh, if you've watched our cocktail videos, you know we tend to prefer vodka, gin, and silver tequila as our base spirits for a drink. Today, I'm using whiskey. So let me show you what we've got here. That's the vermouth. Today, I've got whiskey this is a rye whiskey and if you're a whiskey fan then you're probably already familiar with whistle pig as a brand this is an excellent rye whiskey there's lots and lots of different kinds of whiskey this particular drink i'm going to show you how to make today is called a maple manhattan and it's basically a manhattan with some maple added to it i mean it's supremely easy and manhattans traditionally are made with rye whiskey if you're not a fan of rye whiskey, you could use bourbon whiskey. You could use scotch whiskey. It's going to create a different flavor for profile. But if, if you prefer those kind of whiskeys better than rye, that's perfectly fine. You can enjoy your Manhattan whatever way you want. The other thing, because this is very whiskey forward, you want to use a whiskey that's a little higher end. It doesn't have to be top, top, top shelf. But you definitely don't want, you know, the rot gut stuff from uh, the Quickie Mart because 
you're going to, you want to have a really nicely flavored, balanced whiskey since this cocktail is completely whiskey forward. So to make the Maple Manhattan, you're going to need whiskey, dry vermouth. Now today I have extra dry vermouth and that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you use a sweet vermouth, that's definitely going to change the flavor profile of the drink. And that may not be a bad thing if you think it tastes good. So you can make your Manhattan any way you want. But today we're going to use Whistle Pig Rye Whiskey and Extra Dry Vermouth from Martini and Rossi. And we're also going to need some bitters. This is the most popular bitters called Angostura. This is widely available in the liquor department. And also we're going to need some maple syrup. So this is 100% pure maple syrup. You don't want to use artificial maple products or things that contain high fructose corn syrup that are often sold in cool shaped bottles. Uh, those products are all artificial maple flavor and lots and lots of processed sugar. So that's not my favorite way to go. So I'd recommend 100% pure maple syrup. This product is significantly more expensive than like, you know, maple flavored things like Mrs. Butterworth syrup. No diss on that because it actually tastes really good. But for cocktails, you want to use pure maple syrup if you can find that product. And we don't need to use a lot of it. So even though this is expensive, it's not going to send the price tag of this cocktail to the moon. So, uh, <laughs> bitter sounds like my ex. Yeah, <laughs> I know just what you're talking about. <laughs> so I don't usually use bitters very often, but this is a very important component in a basic Manhattan. So we're keeping the Manhattan mix is, uh, is strictly classic as we can while also adding some maple syrup to it. So to make this drink happen, we're going to need a cocktail shaker. This is a three part cobbler style cocktail shaker. And what I like about it is that the strainer is built into the lid. So that way you don't need any other bar tools to pour this cocktail. So we're gonna use a three part cobbler style cocktail, this cocktail shaker. This vessel portion can hold about 18 ounces. You can use larger cocktail shakers if you wanna double this recipe and make more than one at a time. That's certainly okay to do that. So uh, let's see. Okay, so now we're also going to measure with this little gizmo. This is called a jigger, and it's got a one ounce cup up here and a half an ounce cup up here. Usually in our pre recorded videos, you see me pouring the alcohol into the shaker out of our cute little rainbow logo shot glasses. These are two ounce shot glasses. So if you want to use shot glasses to measure your cocktails, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you want to get some of these cool rainbow shot glasses, just go to kitchenqueers.com and click on the lifestyle button. There's your shameless plug for the day. And we've got cute little shot glasses, coffee mugs, t-shirts, baseball hats, all kinds of fun stuff. So you can get those at kitchenqueers.com. So what are we gonna do? We're going to serve this up. And up means without ice. So today I'm choosing to use a martini style serving glass. You can also serve this on the rocks if you prefer. And you could do that in a low ball or a rock style glass. So if you prefer your Manhattan over ice, you can certainly have it that way. The traditional way to serve a Manhattan is what's called up and that's without ice in a martini style cocktail glass. So that's what we're going to do today. So first to make this happen, I'm going to add a few ice cubes to the shaker. And I usually like to fill the shaker about halfway with the ice cubes. So that's about half. I think maybe one more. Let's get another cube in there. There we go, that should do. Okay, so we've got our cocktail shaker half full of ice cubes to get started. And it's already getting cold on the exterior, so that's good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, I forgot my drip tray thing that I usually like to set out when we make drinks. So I think I'll do this on top of a bar towel instead, just so I don't make a big mess all over the table. Because if you've watched me make cocktails live before, then you are already well aware that things spill from time to time. So I'm just gonna work on top of a bar towel today since I forgot our other little goodie. 
Okay, so I'm gonna use the Whistle Pig Rye Whiskey and we're gonna put two ounces. So I'm gonna fill up the large portion of the jigger twice. So we have one, one big shot and a second big shot. Okay, so that's two ounces of the rye whiskey. Yes, Margaret, I know. Uh, Manhattans are a classic cocktail, but a lot of people have never actually had one. Uh, it's not something that we usually drink around here. However, one of our housemates is a big whiskey aficionado, and he stocked our bar with a probably a couple of dozen different whiskeys, scotch whiskey, bourbon whiskey, rye whiskey, cask, barrel whiskey, you know, there's all different kinds of whiskey. And we could spend hours and hours just talking about whiskey. Today we're using rye whiskey. And like I said, you want to pick a, a higher end brand. It doesn't have to be super top shelf, but you definitely don't want the cheap stuff because this a Manhattan is very whiskey forward and you want a whiskey that tastes good in order to make uh, this cocktail happen. So now I'm going to flip the jigger over and it's time for our vermouth. So I'm just going to do a half an ounce of vermouth. That's it for that. And then we're going to give two dashes of bitters. One, two, just like that. Supremely easy. Okay. And for the maple portion of the Maple Manhattan, we're going to need a tablespoon in order to measure this. And I'm just going to measure one tablespoon of the maple syrup. So just to refresh, we're using two ounces of rye whiskey, a half an ounce of extra dry vermouth, two dashes of bitters, and one tablespoon of 100% pure maple syrup. So we're just going to pour the maple syrup right on in the cocktail shaker. Okay. Hello. Hey, baby. Philip's over here in the kitchen. It's time to make lunch, so he'll be busy over there doing that for a few minutes. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is put the strainer and the cap on top of the cocktail shaker. And I'm always harping on making sure that this is really securely attached. And the reason for that is while you're vigorously shaking your cocktail, you do not want these pieces to come apart because you will have a great big mess on your hands. So... Now we've got this all hooked up. Give it a really good shake. I always like to smile when I'm shaking because cocktails are supposed to be fun. There we go. Okay, so how long do you shake? Well, I shook this cocktail, as you saw, it was just a few seconds. I always like to say just until the outside of the shaker becomes extremely cold and lightly frosted. And that's what this has done. For me, I'm really sensitive to cold through my hands. So as soon as this gets really cold, I can barely hold on to it anymore. And that's how I know that we've shaken enough. Okay, so now we're ready to pour. So let's see what we've got. Ooh, lovely amber color. Okay, and there we have it. Okay, so that's our Maple Manhattan. Now, what I neglected to do at the start I usually like to prepare the garnish for the cocktail first. And I was so excited to show you this cocktail that I completely forgot about that. So what we have today, we have a couple of choices. We could do either a classic red maraschino cherry. Those are easily available. Or we could do a little fancier cherry. These are dark cherries and they've been soaked in brandy. Oh yeah. They're like, yummy. They yummy. are, yeah. Philip, we've had these, uh, a friend of ours gave us a jar of these as a gift and we've been saving them for special occasions and this is definitely a special occasion. So I'm gonna put three on this. So like I say, you can use these fancy, more expensive cherries that have been soaked in alcohol or you can use a standard maraschino cherry, whatever you like. Now, when it comes to garnishes, just FYI, in cocktail lore, it's considered good luck to have three garnishes on a cocktail pick. And it's considered normal to have one garnish on a cocktail pick, but it's considered bad luck to have two. So you want to use either one cherry or three cherries. So to finish off this cocktail, I'm just going to add the garnish to the cocktail glass and just set it right on in there. 
And there you have it, a Maple Manhattan. Hey, Mason's here. Hey, Mason, great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. We really appreciate you being here. And Bushy Beto's here. Great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. And Suburban Barbecue made it. I hope everything went good at the dentist. That, that going to the dentist never is a good time. So thanks so much for joining us. And Texas Food Fan is here. Woot, woot. So great to see you here today. And Uncle Steve Shake. Woot, woot. Hey, Uncle Steve. So nice to see you. Hey, Uncle Steve, I need to send you an email because I we are almost completely out of your products and we cannot have an empty pantry. So I need to place an order for some more goodies from you because we just love, love, love Uncle Steve Shake. If you haven't tried Uncle Steve Shake products yet, I would encourage you to buy a multi-pack from their website, UncleSteveShake.com. They have a spicy version, a regular version, a version of shake for thick meat. We really like Gator Shake. That's awesome. I often use that on salad, and Philip likes to use it to season French fries or other potatoes. Gator for Gator. Gator for Tater. I know. It's awesome. Oh, and Chef Sheila's here from Spasmatic Chef. Hey, Chef Sheila, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming out this afternoon. So what we've just been doing, we have the muffin cups baking in the oven. There's still a little more time to go before those are ready. And we just made a maple Manhattan. So if you missed this, let me run the ingredients by you one more time. We used two ounces of rye whiskey. We used a half an ounce of extra dry vermouth, two dashes of Angostura bitters, and one tablespoon of 100% pure maple syrup. And you wanna make sure it's pure maple syrup rather than the stuff that's artificially flavored or full of high fructose corn syrup, because that product isn't as friendly to mixing as cocktails and it also doesn't taste as good. So that's what we've got going on here. And this is our maple Manhattan. We're serving it with three cherries on a cocktail pick. And I think this looks very festive. I wanna take a picture of this really quick for Instagram. Let's go ahead and get a quick picture of this so I can Instagram it later. Woohoo. All righty. Thank you for indulging me while I took care of that. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is taste this little baby. Okay. So, so we don't make a mess while I'm tasting it. I'm going to set the garnish aside for right now. And let's give this baby a taste. Okay, peeps, cheers. Let's try the Maple Manhattan. Mmm, whoa, oh my goodness. This is definitely a strong cocktail. <laughs> it's very boozy, as you saw there, other than the maple syrup, this is 100% booze. So this is definitely a strong drink. But yes, oh my gosh, this is very flavorful. And with the maple syrup, and the whiskey, they play really nicely together. This is definitely an excellent fall cocktail flavor profile. If you enjoy whiskey, I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy this cocktail. Let's have some more. Mm. Oh my gosh, this is so good. One of my favorite things about having a YouTube show is that we can mix cocktails and it's okay to drink at lunchtime. This is really super good. So if you're a whiskey fan, you will likely love, love, love this Maple Manhattan. Now, if you're not inclined to make individual cocktails when you're having guests over because it's a lot of work, there's no reason why you can't make a batch of this. Just quadruple the ingredients, shake it over ice, pour it into a small uh, pitcher and then stash it in the refrigerator. And then you can just come along and pour whenever you want to and add your garnishes. And then that way you don't have to spend your whole afternoon or evening making cocktails instead of enjoying your guests. So let's see, I wanna check in with the chat, but first I wanna have another sip of this. Oh my gosh. Mmm, this is super yummy. Really, really good. Okay, I wanna move these booze bottles back over here because I don't wanna knock anything over during a live stream if I can help it. So let's put all these goodies back here. All righty, that should do. And let's check, let's take a peek in the oven. Okay, we've got two more minutes. I set the oven for 20 minutes at first because I like to check these at the 20 minute mark and see how they're looking. If they're not quite browned enough to suit me on the top, I let it go for another five minutes for a total of 25 minutes. So we'll check as soon as the timer dings. 
I suspect we're going to have to let it go a little bit longer, but that's okay. So cheers, peeps. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is so, so delicious. So let's see. What's going on with everyone? What are you guys planning for your videos coming up? I'm wondering what people are planning to make for Thanksgiving. Do you guys always have turkey or do you do something different for your protein on Thanksgiving? Here at our house, we're not particularly crazy about turkey. So we always have ham. And then we do some pretty classic side dishes like mashed potatoes. Philip always makes lovely gravy. Uh, we usually do some sort of stuffing. I like carrots. We always usually make green beans, you know, so we usually have, with the exception of not having a turkey on Thanksgiving, we have a pretty traditional repertoire of things that we like to make for holiday dinners. Don't forget the pumpkin pie. Oh, and Philip is always making pumpkin pie. So that's another thing to look forward to because we only get pumpkin pie in the autumn around Thanksgiving time. Woo woo. So pumpkin pie is coming our way in the not too distant future. All vegetarian sides Chef Sheila has. Well, you go, girl. We know a lot of people who don't eat meat, so I always try to make sure that we have lots of vegetarian and a vegan option if we're expecting guests, and I know that they're not meat eaters. And I actually have uh, lots of excellent vegetarian and vegan recipes that don't require any animal products at all. And actually, one of our recent videos where we made pumpkin soup, it was super easy, and it's all totally vegan. Now, let's see. I can see here. Whoops. I can see here in the oven that these are not as far along as I want them to be at the 20-minute mark. So I'm going to push the keep baking button, and then I'm going to set the timer for five more minutes. So push the set timer button, and we'll just dial back to five. Voila. So we're going to give that five more minutes. So just so you know what we're waiting to come out of the oven, if you weren't here at the beginning, today we've been making sausage and cheese egg cups, and this is what they look like. They're super easy. We just did it in a muffin pan. The ingredients are listed in the description below the video if you want to copy and paste that so you can replicate this recipe later. And these are super easy to do. We just mixed the sausage, cheese, and the veggies together in one bowl. And then I beat the eggs with some heavy cream and salt and pepper in a separate bowl. And then we transferred the sausage, cheese, and vegetable mixture into the muffin pan. And then I just poured the egg mixture over the top of that. Supremely easy. And this is the result that we get, these cute little muffin cups. What I really like about these is that there are no wheat products. So if you have people in your household or in your world that don't have gluten issues or don't eat wheat products, these are great for that. And also because there's no wheat products, it makes it lower carbohydrates. Though I did use corn and peas in this recipe, which are at the high end of carbs as far as vegetables go. So if carbs are an issue for you, you can always substitute something for the peas and corn like mushrooms, celery, chiffonated spinach leaves would work really well. You could use tomato in this if you want to, but uh, tomatoes are really wet. So scoop out all the inside of the tomato and just use the flesh from the exterior of the tomato and dice it in small pieces. And that should work really well. If you use vegetables that are too wet, then these will never set up properly and they'll just fall apart when you try to take them out of the muffin cup. So that's one thing you wanna keep in mind when you're doing this. If you're gonna use spinach, I'd recommend using fresh spinach rather than frozen because frozen tends to have a lot of water that it will release as it heats up and that may break down the structure so these don't hold together well. So use fresh spinach and chiffonade it so you don't have enormous pieces. I like to have everything as tiny and bite-sized in these as possible because it makes it easier to put them together and I think it also makes them easier to eat. So thank you, Margaret. We appreciate your positive feedback. If you pay attention to our Instagram, you may have seen I uh, Instagrammed a photo of these sitting on this big red platter a couple of days ago. Um, today, we're gonna wind up with 11 muffins. I didn't quite have enough mixture to fill up the 12th muffin cup. So, you know, sometimes we get 10, sometimes we get 11, sometimes we get 12. It depends on the volume of material that we wind up with. But that's what's going on here with these. Ah, oh, I think I'm ready for another sip of this drink. Cheers, everyone. Mmm. Oh my gosh, that tastes so good. 
that's why I'm telling you, use a quality whiskey when you make this drink because the flavor of the whiskey is very prominent. It's very whiskey forward. And if it's just cheap whiskey, it's not going to taste good no matter what you do. So Whistle Pig, uh -huh. I'm a fan of that whiskey right there. It's a little pricey, but like I showed you, it only takes two ounces per drink. So it's not like you have to use a lot of it. So this is definitely an easy fall cocktail to put together. Uh, 480-ish. <laughs> I wish we got subs as easily as Suburban Barbecue does. <laughs> For a channel that has no content, he has more subscribers than a lot of people I know that put out videos every week. So you go, dude. Okay, so this is what we're waiting for. This is what's in the oven right now. We're baking here in our June. We're almost there. Let me take a quick peek in here. I don't want to open the oven door because I don't want to lower the temperature, but I think we're looking pretty good. It's getting there. We should be ready by the time the timer goes off in another minute or so. So let me move this out of the way and put the lid back on just because it looks pretty. What are you eating? Ham sandwich? Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese. Philip's eating a ham and cheese sandwich over here in the kitchen. I couldn't okay. wait for those to come out. Yeah, we couldn't <laughs> wait for these to come out. <laughs> but lunchtime around our house is usually sometime between 1230 and 130. So when we're doing these noontime live feeds every Tuesday, this is right around the time we would normally have lunch. So I'm certainly hungry and ready to try some of these treats. Once they come out of the oven, they just need to sit for a couple of minutes before you pop them out and put them on a tray. And I'll show you that as soon as we take these babies out because it won't be long now. Okay, let's see. And I want to move this cocktail out of the way so it doesn't accidentally get spilled. So we'll just put it up there for now. I will be drinking more of that before we're done here today. You can bet on that. So it's almost time. Oh, three, two, one, bing. Okay, so now I'm going to push the finish button. And that turns our June oven off. So now we're ready to take this out. Ooh, this looks good. Oh, yes, this is perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. Smells good. Actually, I think I want to set this up here because I'm afraid I'm going to melt this final tablecloth. So I'm going to put these over here. And we're going to close this oven back up. So we're all done with our June. Thank you, June. If you want to learn more about this product, you can go to june.com and you can also find June Intelligent Ovens on amazon.com. This is a wonderful product. We've been using this oven for about four years now. And we are actually official testers of the oven. And if you've been watching our show, you know that we rarely recommend products by brand name, but this is one that I can highly recommend. We, like I said, we've been using it extensively for several years and they are a little on the expensive side, but it really has a lot of amazing features, far too many for me to articulate to you right now, but we're very happy with this product. We use it so much, almost actually we use it every day, at least once a day. And we rarely use our built-in wall oven anymore. And one of the things that we've noticed since doing that is because this is a very energy efficient product that our electric bill has actually gone down since we, we bake in our house every single day, whether it's sweet things or savory things. So to see our electric bill go down, even though we use this oven all the time, was a big plus that we didn't anticipate since we don't use our wall oven, except for when it's something that's too big to actually fit inside this countertop oven. So I'm a big fan of this, and so is Philip. We love the June oven. So we're going to let these just cool down for just a minute. I want to clean up. There's a couple of grease strips here, and I want to get that cleaned up so I don't get it on my pretty shirt. Okay, there we go. All right, now to get these babies out, since the pan was very well greased with olive oil cooking spray, it should be easy to get these out. I like to use a flexible spatula to help coax them out of the pan rather than like a paring knife because I don't want to scratch the finish on this baking pan. So let's see if these come out as easily today as they did last time I did this. You just go around the edge like that and they should just pop right on out. And they did. Woohoo. Okay, so I'm just going to transfer all these little beauties. I just like to take the spatula and go around the outside edge to loosen them up. 
Now this pan is still hot, so you want to be careful. So we're just going to take these and put them out here on our beautiful red platter. For those of you that are wondering, this red platter is from Fiesta Tableware Company. And if you've been watching our live streams or other videos, you've likely seen these dishes in our videos many times. And we've also done some unboxing videos where when we get a new stash to add to our collection, we open them right before your eyes. So you can see what we got in just as we're seeing what we've got. So we'll probably have another uh, unboxing dish video coming up in the not too distant future because we just recently ordered a few new things to add to our collection. We were on hold making any purchases since March because, you know, like probably what's true for you, during the COVID crisis, our income was significantly reduced. So extras like collecting China were something that we just simply couldn't afford to do. And uh, the good news is now, since things are improving, uh, that's changed. And so we can afford to add a few pieces to our collection. And in the next couple of weeks, I'll probably show you some other plates that we've recently acquired. And we also have some new colors that we don't already have in our collection. So I'll be sure and share all of those with you as well. Uh, that's a good question, sent one. Would using cupcake liners be more helpful for cleaning up? The truth is, because this pan is already nonstick, and I coated it with olive oil cooking spray, it's actually really easy to wash this afterwards. And the little bit of residue that remains on the side comes right off. The problem with using cupcake papers on this type of savory egg dish that's baked is that the cupcake papers will stick to the outside of this. And so when you peel the cupcake paper off, you're gonna peel off a lot of this lovely crispy outside and that's part of the equation that I don't want to lose. So it, there's really no benefit to using cupcake liners unless you simply want them to just look prettier with a cute, uh, you know, cupcake liner on the outside. We have some lovely cupcake liners that are metallic gold. What I might do if you want to dress this dish up for the holidays is set them in pretty cupcake liners after they're baked. So that makes it a little friendlier to carry around if you're serving these at a brunch buffet that might be a way to dress up your presentation, but there's no need or no real benefit to baking these inside of cupcake liners. It doesn't make it any easier to clean the pan. And like I said, the cupcake liners will stick to the outside of the egg mixture, and that's gonna spoil, spoil your nice crunchy exterior out here. So that's not something I would personally do, but if you wanna give it a try and see how it works out, be sure and let us know. So let me try. getting all these babies out of here. I want to load this tray up so it looks like the Instagram picture that we showed you a couple of days ago. And these babies are popping right out. Are you going to want to try a little bite? I might. They're a little bit warm. Okay, so as you can see, these come right out really, really easily without a struggle. That's what thoroughly greasing the pan ahead of time will do. Okay, so we've got those. Let's just get the rest of these babies out. We're almost there. Oh my gosh. Eight. Nine. There we go. Oh my gosh. Let's get the tenth one out. Okay, those came out pretty easy. And so if you just let these cool down for like even just two or three minutes before you try to take them out, it definitely makes them a lot easier to get loose from the pan. So we've got one more left. We had enough mixture today to make 11. So let's put the 11th one on a little plate and then we can taste. Okay, so this is what we have. Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary guests, I present to you sausage and cheese egg cups with veggies, yummy, yummy. Oh, thank you for taking that out of the way. Okay. My lovely assistant is over here in the kitchen taking away dirty pans. Isn't that cool? I wish that we had a lovely assistant to take care of all kinds of things around here. So, okay, let me check in with the chat room. Thank you so much for joining us, Chef Sheila. It's always a pleasure to have you here, and we're looking forward to your next video on your channel. Be sure and check out the Spasmatic Chef channel with Chef Sheila. She's really fun to watch, and she makes some really yummy food. Okay, so here we are, sausage and cheese egg cups. And here we are, we've got one here ready to try. Ready to try. We're ready to try. Yeah. Now, what I like to do with mine 
is I like to dollop just a little bit of sour cream on top. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to take a little bit of sour cream. I'm going to stir this up really quick. We're just going to take a little bit of sour cream and dollop that on the top as just a little accoutrement for our sausage and cheese egg cut. Now, you can eat these with your fingers. You can just pop the whole thing in your mouth. You can eat it in princess bites. You can serve it like this on a plate. Uh, I like to do these plated. Usually, if we have these for lunch, we usually have a couple of them. But we're ready to give these babies a taste. Margaret's saying hi. Thank you, Margaret. Okay, so let's spread this around just a little bit and then go for it. Now, these are going to be warm because they just came out not too long ago. So we're going to give these sausage egg cups a taste. Sausage and cheese egg cups is actually what they're called. Got that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers, peeps. Mmm. Mm. These are good. Really savory and yummy. I love the crunchy exterior that you that's created where the food touches the side of the muffin pan. The cheese up the back. The cheese. Oh, yeah. 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 This is a lovely flavor combination. It's very savory. And you can taste you can taste the egg, you can taste the cheese. It's, it's like a loaded mini quiche. Yeah, it's extra like a, it's like an extra loaded mini quiche, but without any crust. Mmm. Mm. They are so good. And as you saw, it's very, very easy. Thank you, Bushy Beto. I really appreciate that thoughtful feedback he's commenting about if we do a podcast. Um, and I'm truthfully, I like doing video. I like seeing while I'm listening. I like watching videos where people are talking to me. I prefer uh, cooking shows where you actually see the person who's doing the cooking as well as watching the cooking, though there are several ASMR style channels that I really like watching. But I also like to have a little personality with my food. So that's why we like doing videos. Uh, just podcasting and talking is something that we certainly could do, but food is a visual business. So I like to be able to show off what we made as well as talk about it. But yes, yeah, sometimes I do have a radio voice. I've been told that lots of times and I take it as a great compliment. So thank you very much. A uh, little fish in the kitchen is here. Hey, Marcel, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. So nice to see you. And Michelle from Michelle's Cozy Home Channel is here. Woot, woot, Miss Michelle. Oh, she is awesome. Love, love, love the Michelle's Cozy Home Channel. She just came out with several new lovely projects for Thanksgiving, and we were totally blown away by how cool everything is. So I, I always gush about Michelle. I think she's a fabulous talent, and she has an excellent channel. So if you are into DIY and arts and crafts projects, be sure and check out Michelle's Cozy Home. She makes really beautiful things. Okay, and I see, let's see, I think I said hi to everyone. I hope I said hi to everyone. We really appreciate you being here today. There's still, oh, I want one more bite. This is so good. So let's just have one more taste of this. This is the sausage and cheese egg cup. It's finger licking delicious. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is so good. These are good. Yeah. These are really the good. Sausage gives it a nice heat. I'll finish, it off. finish it off. We talked earlier about using the sausage that... Oh, okay. Chef Shane wants to know if using butter in the muffin tin would give a crispier result to the exterior than just using cooking spray. I haven't tried using mm, butter for might. that purpose, but it might do just exactly what you're suggesting. I'm sure it would taste good. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it would definitely taste good. That's for sure. So let's see. I want to make sure I said hi to everybody. So, oh, did you want to sample this cocktail really quick while you're here? We rarely say no to cocktails in this house. Let me cleanse my palate. Cleanse your palate so you can taste that. This actually tastes quite lovely with that nice whistle pig rye bourbon that we have. So, okay. So as you saw, if you were, if you missed the beginning, this is sausage and cheese egg cups. 
It's a savory dish that was baked in the oven. It only takes 25 minutes to bake. The ingredients list for what we used here today is right down in the description below this video. And you can also make lots of different substitutions to this recipe as well. Let's see what you think about the Maple Manhattan. I love it. I'm gonna mm. have some more. Mmm. The maple gives it a sweetness that the bourbon doesn't have. Right. Um, which is which was funny. And then the bitters, I guess, it's a base note, but it's really delicious. It's it, it takes the edge off the whiskey just enough that you can still taste the whiskey, but it's not quite as um, not it's not quite as strong as what it usually is because there's face. a nice little sweetness in that maple flavor. I think this is an excellent fall flavor profile for a cocktail. But it needs to be sipped slow. It needs to be <laughs> sipped. It's not a gulping cocktail. It's a sipping cocktail, most definitely. Yeah, and woohoo! Oh, they're talking about. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Well, you can substitute if you don't want to use sausage. You could use bacon crushed up. You could use little bits of ham. If pork isn't your thing, you could use bits of steak. If you have some leftover filet mignon, chop it up small and put it in here. If the vegetables that we chose on our recipe list don't fit for you, use the vegetables you like. You can use mushrooms. Celery, spinach, tomato. Broccoli. You could even, yeah, you could use broccoli. Just cut the floor. It's really small. <laughs> this recipe works best when you dice the ingredients. Not only because it's easier to put together when you're loading everything into the baking pan, it's also easier to eat uh, when you don't have great big pieces of things that are pulling the muffins all apart, if you will. So that's why I like to chop everything really small. That you do not have to limit yourself to the ingredients that we specified. You can substitute whatever kind of vegetables or meat you like. And you can also use whatever kind of cheese you want. We used marbled Colby Jack today that was freshly grated. You can use cheese from a bag if gluten isn't an issue for you. As you may have heard us say many times, shredded cheese in a bag is an excellent convenience product. But the shreds are coated with wheat products, usually some sort of flour derivative. And if you have a gluten issue, then you definitely don't want to use pre-grated cheese. It keeps you want to grate it yourself. From sticking together. Yeah, it keeps it from sticking together, which is lovely. But it's not friendly to people who have gluten issues. So that's why we grate the cheese uh, for ourselves, just not because we have gluten issues, but because we're also trying to keep the carbs down. And every little bit of carb is, you know, we want to make decisions on what carbs we want to enjoy with the narrow range of carbs that we have to pick from. So, yes, he, uh, Suburban says we need to be sitting next to a fireplace while you're drinking that. You are oh. absolutely right. A big rip-roaring fire. And then I, this, I also think, would be lovely uh, with dessert, you know, like with some cinnamon rolls with maple glaze to sort of pick up the maple of the cocktail, perhaps. Or ice cream. Ice cream. Ooh, yeah. Ice cream with maple glaze. woo -hoo. Margaret, thank you so much for being here with us today. We really, really appreciate it. If you try this Manhattan, let us know. Post it on your Instagram and tag us so we can see how it worked out for you. We'd love to know what you think of this drink. It's like turning a milkshake. Pour this into oh, the ice cream yeah. and blend it yeah. all up and have a Manhattan Man milkshake. Manhattan milkshake. That's We're going really to have to be a mashup video you see in the not too distant future if it actually tastes good. Okay, so, oh, not too close to the fire. It's probably flammable. Oh, yeah, Mr. Homeowner <laughs> has that right. Don't sit too close to the fire because this stuff will go up. <laughs> it's Ooh. it's very, this, uh, the, the Whistle Pig rye whiskey is very intensely flavored in a good way. But this is a very booze-forward cocktail. As you saw, there's only, uh, with the exception of the maple syrup, everything else is alcohol. So this is a very, very boozy drink which is why we're suggesting that it be sipped to be enjoyed. But you can drink it as fast as you want because, you know, they're small. You can always make more. So, okay. If anyone has any questions about <coughs> sausage, cheese, <coughs> egg cups, this is a really, uh, as you saw, it's a very easy thing to put together. One of my favorite parts about it is it makes for grab and go snacks or easy meals. Once these have cooled down completely, you can stash them in the refrigerator in an airtight container and then you can just pop out as many as you need and they reheat really nicely in the microwave. We had some conversation 
earlier where there was a question about freezing these. That's not something that we've done because we usually gobble these up before there's the necessity to freeze anything. However, it's likely that this would work well in the freezer. You just need to thaw them out before you reheat them. Uh, one of the suggestions from one of the viewers, I believe it was, I'm not sure, I think it was Margaret, um, suggested putting one or two of these in zip bags and then putting all the zip bags in the freezer so you can just pop out the ones yeah. that you need really super easily. In fact, that would be a great thing. You could idea. pull the frozen ones out in a bag and then you could take them with you to work and just leave them on your desk. And as they thaw out, then they'll be ready to heat up by lunchtime. This makes a great afternoon snack or anytime you just need a little something that's got some protein in it. And it's also a really lovely savory flavor profile. And of course, this makes a nice presentation to set out on the brunch buffet. But don't limit yourself to eating these just for brunch or lunch. These are good almost any time, and this makes an excellent party snack as well. And, you know, they look pretty cool. I think those are awesome. Woot, woot, woot. Okay, so let me make sure I've said hi to everyone. I think I did. If we missed saying hi to you personally, just know that we really appreciate you being here this afternoon and joining us for our live stream. So if you're not familiar with our channel... We do live streams every Tuesday at noon. So if you're into a nooner cooking show, we're here at 12 noon Pacific time every Tuesday for now through the end of the year. And if this show remains popular for the next couple of months, we'll probably be every Tuesday for the foreseeable future. If you have another day or time in mind that would work for you for live streams, better for your schedule, let us know in the chat or leave us a message in the chat. Uh, message comments section below and let us know what you'd like to see happening. Now this Friday, usually every Friday we have a pre-recorded video for you. This Friday, the video that we're working on isn't going to be done in time, sorry. So instead, we're going to save that video for the following Friday and this Friday we're going to have a special live stream also at noon on Friday. So come hang out with us on Friday at noon. I'm, we're still deciding. We've got two different things we're deciding between making. One is, uh, shall we talk about it? Yeah, I guess. Well, yeah. Okay, well, we have two choices for Friday. If you have an opinion, then let us know in uh, the chat. Oh, Shane, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming and joining us today. It's always a pleasure to see your avatar come across our screen. We hope everything's good with you. Okay, so what I was going to say was about Friday on the live stream, we have a choice between either easy low carb canapes or easy chaffle mini pizzas. So the canapes are uh, cheese crisp base and then we add some goodies to the top and we have a couple different choices for exactly how to make those happen. That's super fun and it's something that may be of interest to you if you're going to have uh, a little soiree during the holidays. And also uh, the mini chaffle pizzas, we make chaffles in a tiny waffle maker and then put pizza sauce and pizza toppings on that and broil them in the oven. And that's another choice we have for Friday. So we'll decide which one of those. If you have an opinion, if you'd rather see the chaffle pizza versus the uh, canapes, let us know which one appeals to you. We'll do both of those eventually. Uh, otherwise, we'll probably flip a coin for Friday to decide which one to do. <laughs> anyway, okay. I think we're almost to the end of our time frame. Actually, we've run over a little bit today. We really appreciate you all joining us. Oh, recipes with Risa's here. Hey, girl. We're just about done, but it's great to see you, my dear. Thank you so much for coming to check out our live stream today. We've been making sausage and cheese egg cups. These have sausage, cheese, egg, and lots of lovely vegetables inside. So not only do they taste yummy, but there's lots of healthy ingredients in here as well. And these are gluten-free because we didn't use any wheat products, so they're naturally gluten-free. So if you have someone in your house that is got gluten issues or people that just don't want to eat wheat products because you're doing a lower-carb food plan, this would definitely work for you. So uh, thank you so much, Michelle. We appreciate your positive feedback, and we're always pleased to see that you're here. We know you've got a lot on your plate, so we really appreciate that you took time out of your day to come check in with us and see what we're up to. Thank you so much for doing that. It's always great to see all of our lovely friends here. So, hey, Suzanne Sweet Kitchen is here. Miss Suzanne, love her show. She makes some of the loveliest cakes we've ever seen. And she keeps claiming that she's not a professional. And I know that that means she doesn't work in a bakery, but she makes just really beautiful things. And what I like about 
watching Suzanne is that, well, she's super gorgeous and she's super friendly and she has a lot of fun while she's working. She often includes bloopers at the end of her video. So it's fun to see that, you know, we all make mistakes while we're taping our show. So that's super fun to see. And the, uh, the, the one that sticks out in my head that I recently watched was Suzanne made a Mickey Mouse cake, but it looked like pumpkins were put together to form the Mickey Mouse. Does that, is that, am I explaining that right? Does that, I'm, I hope I got that right, Suzanne. It's just super gorgeous and everything Suzanne does, she makes it look effortless and easy. And what I like about that is she starts, you know, from the very beginning, shows you exactly what she's doing, exactly how to make the decorations happen. She works with buttercream frosting, other types of frosting. She does excellent fondant work. So I can't rave enough about Suzanne's Sweet Kitchen. If you haven't checked out her channel, I'd highly recommend that you do so as soon as you can. So thanks for joining us today, Suzanne. It's always a pleasure to see you here. Okay. I think I said hi to everyone. And yes, thank you, Mr. Homeowner. Click the like button if you enjoyed the presentation today. We certainly appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, please click the red subscribe button and consider clicking that little bell symbol that's right next to it. What will happen then is you'll get notifications right to your phone about the next time we have a new pre-recorded video and you'll get an advance notice of when we're doing live streams, usually maybe an hour ahead of when we're gonna go live. But for now, you can count on, we're gonna be on live every Tuesday afternoon from now through the end of the year. And then we'll have pre-recorded videos or occasionally surprise live streams every Friday afternoon. So, yay! Hey. Okay, it's so great to see you all here today. We really appreciate everyone joining us. We're gonna go and get some other things done now. I've got all this, all the dishes from this to clean up and we have to put the dining room back together. And we gotta feed the cat. Yeah, we gotta feed our cat. She has lunch every day at 1.30 and it's almost 1.30. So it was great to see you today, Mr. Homeowner. Thanks for being with us. Michelle, Suzanne, Marcel, Risa, Mike from Dude's Kitchen and Grill, Scent One 1000, Suburban Barbecue, and all of our lovely, other lovely friends. We really appreciate you being here today. So sausage and cheese egg cups. We hope you give this recipe a try. And if you do, snap a couple of pictures and put one on Instagram and be sure and tag us so we can check out how this recipe worked out for you. And if you tried different vegetables than the ones we used or you mixed up the meat or a different type of cheese, be sure and let us know about that too so we can try your recipe for the sausage and cheese egg cups. Okay, everyone, great to see you. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Mitch, this is my partner, Philip. Hello. We're the Kitchen Queers coming to you from San Francisco, California. And we'll be back again on Friday. So we'll see you on Friday. Thanks again for joining us, everyone. Had a great afternoon. Mwah, mwah, mwah. It's always a pleasure to see all of you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Ciao.